I fundamentally believe that agency owners have the opportunity to help their clients to, to navigate the difficult waters. Hello everyone and welcome to a new episode of the CVO Live, which is not live this time because I'm here in Slovenia at Inorbit and I'm here with Robert Craven. He's the founder of Grow Your Digital Agency. He's uh, one of the best persons in the world talking about the agency issues and I'm really glad that uh, I have you here, Robert. Thanks a lot. Absolute pleasure to be here. It's great to be talking to you about such a great subject. So let's go. Let's go. So the topic for today is how to grow your digital uh, e-commerce agency yep. by not being narrow-minded and not by, by, by not providing the same services that you, you've done. Do you think that's the case? Do you think the e-commerce agencies should understand more about the business models that they are supporting? <laughs> Well, you, you've, you've asked the right question. So, a thousand years ago, I wrote a book called Customer is King with, an author, with a, a forward by Richard Branson. So that kind of gives you a little hint. Ironically, Customer is King now feels like a slightly politically inappropriate title for a book. But it's actually about just thinking things through from the right point of view. What drives me mad? Okay, so there's... And this comes from research from 1961 from Harvard Business School, a guy called Theodore Levitt. It's like, everyone thinks it's all about, it's all about, it's all about the tactics. We've got to make sure we're using the right stack to talk with the right message and then put that through to GA4, through to Zapier, up and bring it back down and, and look at the date. And, and really, it, it, it isn't about the tactics. So everyone goes, oh, it's not about the tactics, Robert. What? Oh, it must be about the st oh, strategy. That's a uh, strategy. Let's talk strategy because, <laughs> because we're, we're econ people, so we talk strategy. If we can't talk about tactics, we've got to talk about strategy. But, my friends, it's not, it's, not about, it's not about strategy. Oh, but we want to go out and strategize. Yeah, we want to do a strategy meeting with the client. It's not about strategy. That's not what really matters. So suddenly everyone's going, so, so what, what, is it, what is it really about? And it's about the customer. You know, it's about their hurts, wants, needs, requirements, how they feel, what they feel about, what they're trying to achieve. It's about understanding what's on their to-do list. And then we need to figure out creating a product or a service that keeps them happy, and then we need to figure out how to sell it. Yeah. And the, the problem is that, that, that we're just... Ecom agencies have a hammer, <laughs> yeah, and everything is a nail. So, so that's cool, and that's good in terms of being really efficient and really effective. But I think they're missing out on a massive opportunity and, and, and if you look at what happened in COVID and what's happening in the current recession, I fundamentally believe that agency owners have the opportunity to help their clients to, to navigate the difficult waters because we see, we see what's going on and what's going on for their competitors. They're in this narrow, narrow little field. So if you're, if you're selling electric bikes, all you know is about electric bikes. You're not. Yeah. You don't know what's going on in the rest of the world. So if you just stick with that for now, just because I've just seen an e-com business that does that, if they had a better understanding of what's going on in the industry, what's going on in the market, what's going on for customers, how people are feeling about politics and so, you know, the political, economic, social, if they had the idea of that bigger picture and we can help them describe that, they're able to make better decisions. So. In a nutshell, I think there's an opportunity there which is being totally missed because we go in and we say, in effect, we say, we, are, we will do glorified classified ads for you. And I think the real opportunity, no one likes it when I say that for some reason, and, and, and I think the real opportunity is to actually help those clients to understand the space that they're marketing in, help them understand how to position their their, their, their the, the product in a way that helps their client to become more profitable. Yeah, I uh, uh, I have 
a lot to unpack from what it's like. We're sorry about that. It's just like. <laughs> yeah, I, I've started you from <laughs> so bas basically I got you started and that's great so what I want to unpack Robert is uh, is the fact that what you're stating is that an e-commerce agency can't simply continue to provide the same services because not knowing the struggles that an, their com their client the e-commerce uh, company is yeah. going through is not going to help them deliver on their promise anymore and what i want to ask you and yesterday in your session you've you you you've beautifully touched this uh, this subject that as an e-commerce agency you either if you want to grow you you have to differentiate so looking at the answer of uh, differentiation matrix do you think it's time for e-com e agencies to start providing different services on their same market or should they think at all about differentiation or do you think going further with what they've done in the past is going to work within the next few years oh there's loads there that's that's not fair you put four four questions into one and then yeah. put a question mark at the end <laughs> so i always do that yeah yeah so it's my bad sorry good, 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 no, so in in general I believe that it's better to niche and niche down as much as you can in general. There are exceptions, but on the whole, if you are, hello, we're an e-com agency, we do lots of e-com, we work with anyone, big or small, we'll do it for governments, we'll do it for charities, Ooh, you're just, it's just a really, really bland offering. More importantly, if you just wear the customer's hat just for one day and say, if I'm a customer and I'm looking for an e-com agency, and you look at, and it doesn't matter, look at 10 agencies, look at their websites. They are all identical, selling similar services and products to similar people, employing similar people using similar software to sell these similar products at similar prices, competing with, it is totally bland. And then when you look at their so-called brand, oh, we've got, we've branded our website. Every one of their websites is identical. It's either people climbing up trees, pulling ropes, playing ping pong <laughs> at the darts table or drinking on a Friday afternoon. And it goes on about, uh, basically the offer, the offer is we're the same as everyone else, but we're functionally cheaper. That's normally what the offer is. If you're lucky, they might say, and what makes us different from the rest? And I get quite excited when they talk about that. What makes us different from the rest is our obsession with the customer. But it, it's just bland words that the copywriter put in. They, and, and if they did, just for a minute, you know, use the superpower of caring, yeah? I think de desperately underrated word. If they used that superpower of caring, the agencies that did that would really, really stand out from the rest. Just yeah. listening and just understanding what it feels like to be the customer, what it feels like to spend a day in the customer's shoes, what it feels like, what the, cha what the real challenges are of, if we could stick with the electric bike, uh, of how on earth are we going to buy, how on earth are we going to deliver, how on earth are we going to guarantee, how on earth are we going to create a value proposition, how on earth are we... And, and I just think that we leave, we leave money on the table. You know, the first agency that I ran, we, we were doing websites for law, law firms, and then obviously they... You just say to them, do you, really, do you really like this logo? Do you really like what this stands for? It's a long time ago. And they go, mm, it's, a bit, it's a bit dull, isn't it? We're, we're a modern thinking law firm. So, like, okay, let's do, let's, do a, let's do a branding workshop. That's where the real value add was. And because we'd done the branding workshop, the actual service was more likely to sell. So one of the problems I think often agencies have is they don't really... They don't really like the proposition of the client, but they don't have the Superman cape yeah. to say to the client, look, Mr. And Mrs. Client, really like the product and service. However, I think the way that you're presenting it is, is letting it down. And I think if, you, uh, if, if, we could, if we could change the way you're presenting it, and that could be the, the price point or the, the copy that's being used, or it could be the target customers they're going for. So as you said, Helping them segment, helping them differentiate, helping them define their value proposition more. With a better proposition, the agency will do better. So if the, if the proposition is pants, 
the agency has to work really, really hard to get any kind of results. If the proposition is just sumptuous and, and sensual and, and sexy, yeah. compelling, then the work of the agency becomes 10 times easier. So why wouldn't you, if you run an agency, why wouldn't you help the client to make the product and service as, as delightful as possible? I just don't understand why they don't do that. Yeah. Just a second to get some water. You want some? Oh, yeah, chuck them across. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Ah! Thank you, Flo, for cutting this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, great editing. <laughs> uh, the Gary thing, right on. I had that in my presentation, too. Good, good. Here we go. It just drives me mad. Sorry. <laughs> anyway, I'm not, you've, I'm not meant to be interfering with your brain trying to look at your laptop. <laughs> I'm writing a fiction story right now. I got something wanted Oh, good. Nice. All right. As we were. Yeah. So, Robert, talking about digital agencies, when they are doing this uh, discovery meeting with their clients, mm -hmm. they are selling, I don't know, email marketing uh, services or PPC or SEO yeah. or whatever. Yeah. I see few agencies asking about the unit economics of their clients, but mm -hmm. really understanding it. And my, uh, my, let's say, challenge is to understand why the heck those agencies are not waking up to the reality that they are more like a doctor to their yeah. patient. And they should be knowing even more about their e-commerce business model yeah. than their clients do. Yeah. Okay, so uh, I, I often mention uh, a gentleman, David Gilroy, who runs Conscious Solutions in Bristol. Conscious Solutions work with law firms. I think it's with between 25 and 100 desks. Really, really specific. So they're able to go to a law firm, and, it, and it's, it's relevant even you know, to, to the audience today. He's able to go to, to, to a potential client and say, so, Mr. And Mrs. Client, how much does it cost you to win a client? And they kind of go, oh, well, we're not really quite sure. And he's able to say, well, you said, in the first call that you got 10 new clients this year and you said that it cost you, you spent 20,000 pounds on marketing. So I think we can say one number by the other, the cost of customer acquisition to 2,000 pounds. Oh, is it? Yeah, oh, yeah it is. it's 2,000 pounds, which means that if you don't sell 10,000 pounds worth of business to them, you might as well have not done the work. How do you work that one out? Well, I see from your, see from your account that you're on a 20% margin. So just loose figures. Yeah. Until you've sold them £10,000 worth of business, you've not paid for the marketing. No. Do you want to know how much it costs us to acquire a client for one of, our, one of our law firms that we work with? I'd be really interested. Well, the number is whatever it is, £27.29p. P. Would you be interested in that? And because the business, because it niches and it knows more about the niche and all the players in the market, it knows more about the niche than the people in the niche themselves do, they... One, they're able to kind of act as, a, as an aerial to, to bring information in and people start coming towards you to say, oh, you know, you work with some of our competitors. Tell me, what, what, what's their cost of customer acquisition? What's their lifetime value of a customer? Or yeah. Yeah, how long does it take for a... And you're able to tell them this stuff. So you become a, a, almost like a thought leader. Yeah. And then uh, you're, because you're in a much smaller pond it's much easier to become a, a big fish in that pond. It's much easier to become a big fish in a, in a pond. I'll, I'll give you an example. I wrote two books, one called The Check-In Journal. Fantastic, okay, brilliant book. Competing with Tony Robbins, competing with um, uh, Stephen Covey, all those big people, yeah. And I wrote Grow Your Digital Agency. Grow Your Digital Agency. Aiming to only to talk to about 30,000, 40,000 agencies which are in the UK. I'll be honest, the one that wasn't niche, that was general, probably sold 1,500 copies of that. It never, it never got going. And the reason it never got going was because there's just too much noise in that space, too much competition for anyone to even notice. Yep. No matter how good that book was, it couldn't be found. The Grow Your Digital Agency book, on the other hand, we've sold, I think, 28,000, 30,000 copies because in that space, there's not a lot written 
and therefore it stands out. And I think by taking the, the approach of becoming more niche, you're able to stand out, be heard, become more of an expert, really assist, really help your clients as opposed to just being another agency. Just another digital agency. Another agency with a really boring website. What would you be uh, saying that it's the problem, the, the, the main problem that keeps digital agency leaders from differentiating, from understanding more in, in this context? Mm. I think part of the problem, part of the problem is I think the problem's tech. Yeah, you know, uh, uh, did Uber kill taxes? No, the fact that taxes weren't convenient killed taxes. Did Netflix, you know, kill the video rental market? No, the fact that the video rental market was incredibly inconvenient and charged you if you were an hour late. You know, did Apple kill the record company, the record business? No, people just wanted to buy single tracks and the record company weren't prepared to do that. So, so, the, so I get that these are all tech solutions. I totally get that. But the underlying problem that they solved was a customer problem. So, so I think part of the problem for agencies is they always see the customer issue as a, as a, as a tech piece. Whereas, in fact, tech will provide the solution, but I will go back to it being understanding what it, what it feels like to be a customer, to understand. If you can understand the pressure that someone's under because it's their year end, because they've got three kids, but two of those kids have got autism and the third one is, is a genius and the wife's under stress. You know, that is as, as in, to understand that going on for the client is as, as important as being able to help them to resolve the way that the, you know, the, the product or service is presented. Yeah. No problem. You might as well talk, because that's to be edited. <laughs> I, 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 was I know, I know. Flo is Bye. going to love you, you know, eventually. <laughs> Yeah, Our editor. Well, if I'm gonna die of not normal causes, I'm gonna know someone cursed me. Have fun. <laughs> not gonna die. Good dead. luck, man. <laughs> How are you, Ross? Okay. okay. All right. So, <clears throat> shifting gears a bit. Do you think it's a better or a worse year for agencies in the uh, serving e-commerce? What we're seeing is a worse year. And the reason I say that is because, my God, it was like a license to print money when COVID came out. If you were in the right space, you know, little pools for the, for the garden, swings for the garden, <laughs> static bikes and so on and so forth. If you, you know, all that stuff was, oh my God, you couldn't make it, you know, you couldn't get enough e-com business through. You could, everyone was online. And I think what happened is that, sudden surge which was really exciting because as you know we had like seven years of digitalization within yeah. like six months that sudden surge in demand the clients for some odd reason felt that it should continue and clearly people weren't staying weren't going to stay at home forever and at some point you can only have so many swings in your garden and so many ping pong tables and you know so many pizza making kits and so on and so forth <laughs> Should you do that one again? <laughs> no, 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 it's okay. So, so yeah, at, at, at some point that bubble was going to burst. And, and the growth rates were so phenomenal going, going through COVID that when, when, the, when the growth suddenly stopped, the clients wanted more, but it was more expensive to deliver it because the price of everything was becoming more expensive. So there's almost like a double, from the client's point of view, almost like a double whammy. <laughs> yeah. All right. Okay. So, so to to summarise, we're seeing loads and loads of e-com agencies finding clients being more demanding and and quite disappointed, and the agencies at the same time had been growing. Growing. I'll give you. I'll, I'll give you a really really quick example of a small agency we're working with. Yeah. 
there were 25 people, 18, 19 people pre-COVID. At COVID, there were 25. Post-COVID, 45. Whoa, this is fantastic. We're really going some. Because it's, because it's e-com, their clients were large. And then last month, they lost one, two, three, four, five of their clients, which represented, you know, they only had 12 or 15 clients, which represented literally you know, half of revenue. Now, you talk about whether that's a good or bad thing or why, or why that happened. But the clients, only one of the clients went because of they, they weren't happy with the service. But the, one of them were taking it in-house. One of them, my brother-in-law just set up an agency, so we're taking the work there. One of them, some weird story about uh, it was a rubbish product and, and we knew it in any case, so... But, but, but because we're being funded by the venture capitalists, we're going to have to do something, so we're going to sack you, you know. So suddenly you've got 45 people and you've only got, you're back to only having worked for 25, you know. And, and that, and my, I guess my point is, in these volatile times, da-da-da-da-da-da-da, it's like a set of dominoes that just disappear. The guy who ran the agency did no wrong. Um, so now it's way more volatile. Yep. Clients are expecting way more. The cost of delivery is much higher. Um, and so I think we are very much in, in maybe it's a transitionary time. I'm not sure. I think that, I think that these times, post-COVID and this semi-demi recession that we're in, everyone's just a bit phased. We think COVID's behind us, but I think everyone's still kind of rattled and, and not settled. Not only agency owners are rattled and not settled, but more importantly, our clients are rattled and not settled. Going back to what I said before, because they don't understand their business environment, and that's our opportunity to go into them and say, look, you feel rattled. Let's just explain what's going on, what the impact of inflation is. Let's just explain how that's impacting the sector and, it's, and, and, your, and your customers and your competitors. Let's just do some work to help you understand that whole piece. So I just feel... We talk about digital marketing. Digital marketing's taken ownership of the word marketing. I think that's a, a disgrace because I think yep. the word marketing, you know, helping people buy what they really want, helping them to understand what the choices are, that broad definition of marketing, we've, we've, we've failed to do in this very, very abbreviated version of marketing, which is really just trying to sell people stuff. Yeah. Uh, I want to I wanna address a topic which is uh, more related to, to the opportunity that it's during this semi-demic yeah. recession, which uh, we, we, we touched a bit earlier, but companies really don't know their unit economics. I mean, in e-commerce, they don't know their unit economics. And if an agency knows their unit economics, like you said with the law firms, mm -hmm. if you can understand what is the trend between the customer lifetime value, how you get from a mm -hmm. customer and the customer acquisition cost, how much you pay for that customer. And if you can show this data, you can even go more deeper to, to state, those are the categories that you should be putting out there. You, you can afford to even bid more. Yeah, yeah. You can Im imagine we are a PPC company. Let's say it's your, you're a PPC agency, but you have to understand that. If you don't understand that, and if you sell the old services where money was everywhere and the demand was like this, you, you can't thrive into this environment as, as an agency. However, you can do way better than before as an agency if you outcompete other agencies which are not getting that. So that means you'll be able to retain your customers and you'll be able to close more deals by understanding this type of uh, growth mechanics of, uh, yeah. in e-commerce. Yeah, so I 100% agree with you. So the irony is, uh, what this conversation is saying is we should help clients to run a better business and I think that's personally, I think that that's personally, I think that's our moral duty to actually say, to start off from, I just thought you should know that, you know, when I, when I arrived at your premises, there was, the, the sign was really dirty. And then when I came through, there was no one at reception. And then when uh, I went up in the lift, there was, there was rubbish in the lift because I could have been a client. So I think it's our moral duty to, to help them run a better business all the way through to, you know, would you like to sit down and talk about profitability? And, and that same, very same um, 
set of spectacles, that very same way of looking at the world, we should be applying to ourselves. I think many agencies don't have the financial rigor, so they are on the whole run by reluctant entrepreneurs. You know, I'm on my own, tick -a -tick -a -tick. I'm employing five people, tick -a -tick. I'm employing 15 people. Wow, we're employing 20 people. Oh, I really yeah. now, now need to become a managing director. Wow, we're employing 40 people. I've read a couple of books. Wow, we're employing 80 people. I've now got a board. I think I've got away with it. Um, <laughs> and not enough, not enough agency owners, agency leaders have proper business education. Yeah, you know, so, so I've run whatever it is, five, seven businesses in my time, got an MBA. I'm not saying the MBA is the, the right answer. I, I'm not a great fan of MBAs, but you need to have that some sort of depth and breadth of understanding of what, what it takes to run business. To run your own business and to run their business. Because if I was in the shoes of one of your clients, I'd be saying, you don't understand, you don't understand business, one, two, you don't understand my business, yeah? And, and you, don't understand, you don't understand me and what I'm about. So off you go. Or, my God, you have a real grasp of what's going on in the world. And my word, more importantly, you've, you've done the research, but you really understand my particular products and services and, and the issues that we've got. And it's just really nice to talk to someone that I kind of feel like we engage with and you're, you're, you get what I'm trying to do. Because that person that you're trying to sell to, they have a private life that they're, and, 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 and they're only running their business so they can get their private life. So if you understand what, you know, we talk, for us, we talk about, we help you run, it's not meant to be an ad, but we help you run the agency you want to run so you can live the life you really want to lead. It's just that old fashioned, what's the benefit of the benefit yep. piece that is marketing one, should be marketing 101, and we should all be doing that for our clients. Because then we're properly helping them, as opposed to assuming they want more sales, or they want a million revenue, or they want 500K of profit. That's not what they want. They want that for some other reason, like they've got a yeah. dream of building a cinema in their home, or they want to have all their kids privately educated. If we can figure that piece out, then, then we can actually look at the right metrics for them, then we can do a brilliant job, then everybody wins. Yeah, I love it. It has a lot to do with uh, obliquity. You know, if you want to get the things that you want, you better help your yeah, clients yeah, yeah, get the things yeah, that yeah. they really want. And in order to do so, you need to understand your customers better and to be genuinely curious yeah. about what the heck they want yeah. in this life, you know, yeah. where, where they are, where, where, uh, in the context that, the, that they are in. Last question for you, Robert. Cool. What's your number one advice for e-commerce agencies that are struggling right now? Besides all the things that you've said, you can sum it up if you want, or you can come up with, uh, with, with something else, of course. I think we touched on it, but we didn't actually nail it. So I think for me, it becomes much easier internally for the business and externally for people to understand what you do if you nail the positioning piece. So positioning is about segmentation and differentiation. What do we stand for? How do we do it? Why do we do it? Where do we do it? I think we way too often do a cut and paste of someone else's website or someone else's words or we go to chat GPT and say, <laughs> what's the vision for, what's the vision for, a, you know, for an agency like mine? And so as a result, because we don't know who we are and, and what we are and what we aren't and what we want to do and what we don't want to do as a business, uh, it makes it really difficult for, for them, potential customers, to know what we do. And it makes us really difficult, really difficult for us to know when to say no or not. So I would kind of go, I would actually go back to, you know, back to almost like the day one of the business. It's like, who are we? What do we stand for? How are we different from the rest? Why should people bother to buy from us when everyone else is faster, smarter, brighter, friendlier? <laughs> Just going back to that piece is like a refresh. And then 
I think you can return to the market with more confidence about what you do. But as long as as long as the proposition is the we do what everyone else does but fractionally cheaper, or the other one is I expect you're really fed up with your current digital agency will be will be fractionally better and slightly less irritating. That's not sustainable. You need to stand for something, and I think we we don't do that often enough. Perfect. Robert, thanks a lot for being uh, today with us. If uh, our audience, if people want to get a hold of you, where where are where, where do you hang out? Where do I hang out? So the website is Guida, G-U-I-D-A, standing for Grow Your Digital Agency, Guida.co. No M at the end. So Rob at Guida.co will get hold of me and all the usual channels. Perfect. Thanks a lot. And uh, for you out there, I hope you've got the idea behind this uh, episode. So if you're an uh, e-commerce agency, you better rewind and listen again to this man because uh, I, I strongly resonate with what uh, Robert said today. And uh, as for you out there, we'll see each other in the next episode of the CVO Live, which is going to be live that time.